Welcome to the channel. Now I'm out on site. This is a new job where we're going to be putting a really nice roof on with rooms in the roof. A little bit like the big build if you saw that series. If not, go and have a look at it as well. It's part manufactured in the factory and all the rest we're going to be building on site. So what I like to do is mix up a design, eliminate steel work, use technology and especially timber technology to give us big spans to give us some really nice spaces as well without the need for unnecessary timber work or steel so the first job is put the wall plates on so what i've got behind me is basically the shell this is where the roof starts everything comes from here and we're putting wall plates around on every wall on the inside skin and across the wall that runs across the middle there where we pick up some joists so so the first step in the job is make up enough plates with what i call opposites okay so i'll have a half lap on it and on the other side i'll have its opposite if you like so um, when i lay this one on here this one will lay onto it and the next one will lay onto it as well so we do we do that all the way around We'll put this one in once we've positioned it, we'll mark it, we'll do it all dry, cut all the joints, and then we'll put all of the beds on together, okay? So that's the simplest way of doing things. I've got my client and very able-bodied person, Callum, who's actually downstairs, and he's just sorting out a number of timbers for us, so we've got enough to be getting along with. Here he is down there. We're gonna stick a load on the stools. We're gonna cut all of those joints first. That speeds things right up. Now here's where I've positioned the laser. I put it right in the sort of middle of the building here. And this is a green laser. It's got a fantastic range. And we also use uh, a range finder if you like. It's a small device which can pick up the beam in bright daylight, okay? So this is just a typical laser rangefinder and we'll use that to bed on the plates as well as a stick level as well and so that's it we're going to get downstairs cut those timbers up and get on with it So that's it, I've cut the majority of the halvings and I put the time lapse on which you've probably just seen and that ran for a total of 46 minutes and in that time we've probably cut, well let me think, it was about 13 pieces, a lot of them had two, uh, one on each end, so we've probably cut about 20 halvings. So it literally takes a couple of minutes a halving by using only a circular saw. One for the shoulder cut and one for the rip. And then it's really easy to clean them out. Callum was taking them off, cleaning them out. Now they're ready. So we're gonna go and do a dry fit. Okay, so all the wall plates are cut. They're just laying on and they're dry. All the joints are done everywhere. So you can see all of the halvings. We've also got the spine wall through here, which is also lapped in of course here and carrying all the way through. So how we did it is we went through and got the back datum all the way sorted. We have a dimension all the way through the back. And then we went through this side. We have a dimension for that. And we made sure that the spine was parallel to this one. We made sure that the front plate across that window there was also parallel from this corner over to the spine. So we've got a square box here effectively, which we can square up. And then we've got the small return comes out the front there which again is out of one piece of wall plate with a lap in it so we've got a halving on the end followed by a lap joint there that's called a lap joint there let me show you around the other side typical lap joint and we're ready to go so 
That corner I'm looking at is what we call the high spot. That's the one that's a little bit on the high side, not a lot. And we'll start there with about a 12 to 15 mil bed. When we end up down in this corner, we'll end up with a 15 to 20 mil bed or a three quarter of an inch or thereabouts. Now it's quite important this because our lintels where you can see this damp going over the top actually stick up a little bit because the block work runs inside of them here. So we do need to be up a little bit. And we've got the laser set up and the laser is going to enable us to do spot checks, basically get the corners right. So how I've made this is so we start by bedding all the way through the back there and we can bed all the way down the side there. Then we're going to work along, along, up to that corner and from that corner to there. So that's basically what we're going to do. The critical measurements here is front to back because we've got these huge trusses. We've got a, a triple sitting about here on that pier at the back. We've got a double sitting quite close to it. We've got another set, excuse the focus on my finger, another set virtually over this wall. So that plate doesn't actually do a great deal apart from fill a space. And then the rest is loose fill. We're building timber gable on that end, timber gable on that end, timber gable over the front of this wall as well. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be really good. So this job now is a matter of mixing up some cement. I like to sort of keep the mix fairly weak, still sort of four and a half, five to one soft sand without any stones in it okay and cement and now the key result is we need to wet down as we go because these blocks on a day like today it's very warm slightly windy the blocks will suck the life out of that cement and by the time you've bedded or got from end to end on a wall like this the chances are it will just be stiff as anything so we want to keep it fairly wet and get the plates on so we can use a um, soft blow hammer or something like that just to tamp them down or the end of the trowel and that's basically it we're going to start bedding in this corner all the plates are in we've marked a measurement everywhere wherever that measurement is that's how far the plate is to the outside of the block work so once we take it all off put it all back we can check it and start i've also got the laser up over there callum has got his laser finder here and we've set it so the top of the plate, where we start bedding, is the highest point. Now Callum, we quickly check that everywhere then mate. Over the lintels. What we want is enough space. What we don't want is to be jamming down. Perfect. So that's brilliant. So we've actually checked the whole site and everything's absolutely perfect. We know we can get a decent bed wherever we need it, all the way around. We've got our datums written on. There's Callum over there checking it again. We've got our datums written on, how far to measure from there to the outside of our block work. So we're ready to go. We've got two nice big buckets of really nice wet sand and cement. We're also gonna use that water bottle sprayer first. We're gonna come all the way down the back we're gonna come all the way through the side and then we're gonna work all the way around. So all of the joints have been cut to do it in that order. That's it, let's stick a time lapse on and get on with it. So we put a decent bed underneath everywhere and using our datums, our measurements, we're able to get that nice and flat. So the underside of the laser finder is top of plate. So that means wherever we go around the building now, we just keep the laser finder to the top of the plate. Callum's doing a marvelous job, makes up a lovely bit of gear. And that's the key to this. You're gonna have high suction in parts. Let's take here where it's just all block work and then coming over these lintels where we got this nice uh, damp course, if you like, that goes down to the weep holes over those lintels is not so much suction. So you've got a bit of time there. So this particular run now is gonna be quite good. We've got high suction here, but we haven't got any up there. So we can put this lot all the way through now and get that straight. We can then work around the front corner where Callum is and pull this section through the middle that parallels everything up. 
and then we've just got the easy bit here running through and as we go we're screwing the corners to hold it all as well Callum's got the sprayer there so he's just gone over this bit here now he's going to get some muck on here and away we go self-taught bricklayer Callum aren't you mate oh, yeah. Callum's actually yeah. built built this and um, I think he was quite nervous when I came to critique it but I'm telling you I've been on so many jobs where it's not even anywhere near close to this in terms of square level flat so yeah it's a good job it's a good job right we'll get on and fix the rest of these plates up the plates are all on everything's fixed all the corners are screwed Callum's just pointing up the backs and the fronts getting them all lovely and neat and we're weighing them down with blocks because once the sun gets on them it will want to bake them and curl them up but that's fine providing the muck is um, nice and flat underneath because they'll just go straight back down when we put the restraint straps on so yeah that's that job done now I'm gonna show you how I do those halvings that you saw at the beginning on that time-lapse I'm gonna take you through how we do them so fast and so clean so as I said this is how I like to do the halvings. What I don't do is put lots of repeat cuts across, then smash it in the end, make a load of dust, having to do a lot of chiseling. It just takes too long. All we get is this. We just get these and they're really quite straightforward. I will caveat this and say, if you're a professional, this is something that I would say have a go at. If you're not, make sure the work's well held and well clamped because when we do the cuts, as you might have seen in the time lapse, I'm ripping with the material standing up. So it might be prudent to clamp it down or something like that. But obviously, I've been doing this for 37 years. So for me, this is pretty straightforward. Okay, another little trick. This piece of prime represents the thickness of the timber, okay? I've added a mill on as well to make sure that everything fits perfectly. And we use this everywhere, okay? So all of the joints are exactly the same length and they work when they're at right angles to one another. And the reason I do that is because if you, you know yourself, if I've had to cut about 30 joints. If you measure, human error means that one will be tight and one won't be. So here we go, this is how we start. Taking that bit of ply, offering it on here, marking a little shoulder mark, a bead square, mark it across. Then taking the circular saw, which is set to the depth, put my ear defenders on, speed square, And that's the only cut we do there. And then we mark the center. We do this freehand. With, with experience, you just know exactly what is the center. Mark that round there. Make sure we cut the right side of the line. And then using the larger saw, I'm gonna rip, obviously, down the line. I'm gonna look at this blade with that line and also as it plunges in because you can see that we've not got a lot of surface area so if you just put your weight here and push it through if there's any cup in this this is actually not 90 degrees to that face so it's just a bit of experience but I'll show you what that looks like in fact we look in from here repeat the process on the other side and the blade finds its way because it will go into that groove and then you can relax a bit more. So we're not over cutting and once we're at that position just give it a little tap with a hammer. If there's knots you might not be able to do this and then you can remove that bit and then all you're doing is just cleaning up the little crest that's left in the middle which is not a great deal at all and that's your halving done so this is what I don't do and then you see a lot of people doing all this business and you can see it's just creating loads of mess all over the site 
and then you've got to do a lot more chiseling so we stick to the way that I do it and it's just a lot quicker and easier but practice and clamp your work down as well okay this is something you'll be super careful of and you need to be really quite handy with a circular saw a well-balanced circular saw as well and that's it that's how my halvings are done so that's it another day's work over all the wall plates are cut bedded down dead straight dead parallel square and of course level ready for the roof structure which is going to be pretty epic so stay tuned if you want to see a little bit of that i'm going to be filming some of it and getting it onto the channel and thanks again for joining me if you're not a subscriber maybe consider subscribing and that's it have a good one